Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me for um, our devotions this evening. I wanted to share with you some thoughts on my that have been on my heart for about a couple of weeks now. It was about two weeks ago that we were experiencing a, a pretty major drought here in Delaware, in in our part of Delaware, and the it. It hadn't rained for for a long time. It was it was so dry that the grass was turning brown, and we were when you walked on the ground that it, it was crunchy, and we were hustling to water our trees. Um, the the corn in the field was was looking like it needed some rain. It really wasn't looking as green as it should, and and the farmers were busy 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 with um, irrigating the, the fields and but you know they, there was only so much they could do and they were about to to lose quite a bit if we didn't get rain soon and we were in danger too of, of losing some trees so our churches started to pray for rain and and one week one prayer meeting I remember a man prayed said dear God we don't need, we don't want a big, big, uh, dangerous storm like a tornado. We just want a drenching, nice rain. And he said, maybe I'm being picky, God, but, but I, I guess I'm just reminding you. And, and I just love that. I, I love to hear someone talk to God in, in such a childlike way, in a humble way. And um, you know what? That very weekend after that prayer meeting, the heavens, the heavens were opened, and we had a nice, drenching downpour for not just one day, not just for a few hours, but it was an overnight downpour. And, and then the next day, it was a downpour. And I believe even the day after that, we had some rain that really made a difference. And it was, wasn't like a tornado kind of rain. It was just the kind of rain that man prayed for. And it was just a nice, gentle, drenching rain. And what a blessing it was. It was such a blessing. And, you know, that put my mind on the hymn, the old hymn. There shall be showers of blessing. I remember when I went to ch going to church as a little girl. And any time it rained on a Sunday, the hymn, the song leader would usually pick out that song to sing as a congregation. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. And so that song came to my mind. It probably came to a lot of our minds that weekend. And you know, that song uh, was based on um, a verse in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 36. And it reads, And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in his season there shall be showers of blessing and I was looking at that more closely and I was looking at the words I will make them and I will cause you know God is the one who's in control God's the one who's working into making us a blessing and to causing uh, blessings to come on us he is working in our lives and when I look at those words that's what I see I will cause God is ever working to make uh, us a blessing to others and to bring blessing into our lives so let's see how God worked in the hymn writer of Showers of Blessing and how he caused blessings to come to him and to overflow through his life. Now, his name was Daniel Whittle. Um, 
He was a great evangelist and hymn writer. He traveled with the D.L. Moody um, evangelistic uh, team there, and and he he had a great impact for um, towards um, our hymns. He wrote a lot of really good hymns. Um, he wrote. Um, I know who I'm, I have believed. He wrote moment by moment, and but he's most well known, I believe, for showers of blessing. And so I want to read to you his conversion story, and it goes like this: It was shortly after he was wounded during the Civil War. Now um, he said, "We had many engagements, and I saw many sad sights." And in one of the battles, I was knocked out. And that night, my arm was amputated above the elbow. As I grew better, having a desire for something to read, I felt in my haversack, which I had been allowed to keep, and found the little testament. Little testament. Um, my, uh, my mother had placed there. His mother had given him this New Testament before he he was deployed in, during the Civil War. And this is my New Testament um, that I'm not sure if my mother gave it to me, if it was presented to me when I was a baby, but it was found recently and it has my name in it. So this is my personal New Testament I'm using. And so he found that book during his hardship there and his arm was amputated and and he was just in the healing process but he was reading this book he was reading through the book Matthew Mark Luke to Revelation and every part he said was interesting to me and I found to my surprise that I could understand it in a way that I never had before when I had finished Revelation I began at Matthew and read it through again and so for days I continued reading, and with continued interest, and still with no thought of becoming a Christian, I saw clearly from what I read the way of salvation through Christ. And so he went on to tell about a dying soldier who was next to him in the hospital. And there was an orderly there, and he noticed how, um, how Major... Whittle or Daniel Whittle would read the Bible and so he thought he was a Christian but but he really wasn't at the time he, and so but he asked him could you pray for this dying man just please pray with him pray for him and at first Daniel Whittle he 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 didn't want to at first but he was finally convinced to pray for this dying soldier and this is what he wrote I dropped on my knees and held the boy's hand in mine. In a few broken words, I confessed my sins and asked Christ to forgive me. I believed right there that he did forgive me. I then prayed earnestly for the boy. He became quiet and pressed my hand as I prayed and pleaded God's promises. When I arose from my knees, he was dead. A look of peace had overcome him. Had, had come over his troubled face, and I cannot but believe that God, who used him to bring me to the Savior, used me to lead him to Christ's precious blood and find pardon. I hope to meet him in heaven. So this is the background of the, of the writer of Showers of Blessing. Showers of Blessing. And his blessing came in that started with that his mother with his and putting that new testament in his haversack for him to read and take in god's word and then he had the god made him a blessing to that boy who was dying as he was praying with him first confessing his own sins to god and accepting christ and i believe this soldier may have trusted in christ as well before he died. So about 80 years later, in another uh, war situation, um, there was a man named 
It was about 80 years later in the Vietnam War, a man named Howard Rutledge was, um, his plane was shot down over in Vietnam and he parachuted into a little village and he was immediately attacked and he was immediately imprisoned and he was in prison for seven years and he was brutally, brutally treated. Um, he, he had little food. Um, he was cold, he was alone, sometimes even tortured, and he wrote in the book that he, uh, he wrote in his book, In the Presence of Mine Enemies, he wrote, I wanted to talk about God and Christ and the church, but in heartbreak, that was the name of his concentration camp, there was no pastor, no Sunday school teacher, no Bible, no hymn book. I had completely neglected the spiritual dimension in my life. It took prison to show me how empty life is without God. And so I had to go back in my memory to those Sunday school days in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If I couldn't have a Bible and a hymn book, I would try to rebuild them in my mind. I tried desperately to recall gospel choruses from my childhood and hymns that we sang in church. The first three dozen songs were relatively easy. Every day, I tried to recall another verse or a new song. One night, there was a huge thunderstorm. It was the season of the monsoon rains, and a bolt of lightning knocked out the lights and plunged the entire prison into darkness. I had been going over hymn tunes in my mind and stopped to lie down and sleep when the rains began to fall. The darkened prison, prison echoed with wave after wave of water. Suddenly, I was humming my 37th song. And do you know what that was? It was a song he said he entirely forgot since his childhood. Yes, showers of blessing. And he was singing, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. He goes on to say, the enemy knew that the best way to break a man's resistance was to crush his spirit in a lonely cell. He wrote, in other words, some of our POWs, after solitary confinement, lay down in a fetal position and died. All this talk of scripture and hymns may seem boring to some, but it was the way we conquered our enemy and overcame the power of death around us. And he said that one of the favorite verses that they would quote was um, John 3.16. That would be the one that was most quoted. And uh, also they, they quoted Psalms 23. So those two stories together really emphasize what showers of blessing really are. They're not something that shouldn't, the, the best blessings are, are spiritual blessings. And yes, God gives us many blessings. He gives us families. He gives us, you know, he does give us material things. He provides for our needs that way. But, the, but most importantly, he, he gives us spiritual blessings. Material blessings don't, don't mean an, a thing. They don't really mean much. The blessings that really are important are the ones that have eternal rewards, that, 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 that count for Christ. That's the real blessing. That's where true blessing lies. And we think about the abundance of rain. When I think about that story of the man who was shot down in Vietnam, and he heard the abundance of rain. He heard that. He, he, and he, it helped him. To remember that song, Showers of Blessing, and it helped to um, refresh his soul. Well, in the Bible, well, in that song, I mean, the Showers of Blessing, it talks about the abundance of rain, and it's in one of the verses, um, Sound of Abundance of Rain. And that actually com comes from Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter, um, let's see, chapter... So I got my notes kind of mixed up here. Uh, let's see. Let's try 1 Kings <laughs> chapter 18. 
Let me turn there really quickly. First Kings chapter 18. And I just want to read you a few verses about this account of Ezekiel in the Bible where he was um, challenging the idol worshippers of Baal and to pray to their false gods and ask their God to bring down fire from heaven to burn up their sacrifice. And, and he said, I'll, I'll pray to the one true God, my, my God. And, and I'll, I'll, and he will fight, he will burn up the sacrifice and we'll see which God is the real one true God. Well, of course, the Baal worshipers, they, they pray, they prayed to Baal. They, 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 they begged Baal. They, the Bible says they even cut themselves trying to get this false God to bless them by bringing fire from heaven to burn up their sacrifice. And, and of course we know that, that there's no other, no God, but the one true God. And so they did not, they did not get that blessing. So their God did not even hear them. So Ezekiel, he went ahead and he um, had hit the sacrifice uh, put on the altar. He prepared the altar and he put the bullock on the altar and, and he even had uh, water. Uh, let me, let me get, I'm getting a lot ahead of myself here. Let me read, just read it for you. If you want to turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 18 verse, uh, let's start with, um, Verse 31, okay? And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put wood, the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid them on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And so it goes on to, uh, to say that God did answer his prayer in verse 37. He said, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and all the people saw it and they fell on their faces and they said the lord he is god the lord he is god and so in verse 41 elijah told ahab king ahab get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain now elijah didn't see the rain here he said there was a sound of the abundance of rain but his faith was so great that his spiritual ears could hear the abundance of rain and sure enough elijah elijah's prophecy came true here let's look at verse 44 and it came to pass the seventh time that they he told his servant to go go and look towards the sea and and so this he did this again and again seven times so the seventh time he said behold there riseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up say unto ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain now before this, there was a drought in the land. So this rain was a blessing to everyone. And especially, especially it showed the glory of God and the power of God in, in, in being in control and, and blessing, having his hand of blessing. You see that? His hand, the cloud was like a man's hand. And out of that cloud, came rain and it poured down so like a man's hand I love that God's blessings so God abundantly um, answered Elijah's prayer there 
And, you know, God gives us many blessings. And we he doesn't want us to forget forget the blessings he's given us. Let's look at Psalms 103. I'm going to wind it down here. Psalms 103. If you have trouble thinking about, oh my, what kind, what blessings did God do in my life? I have all of these situations going on, and I'm so troubled, and I, I just don't, don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't see God's blessing in my life. Well, I think this psalm will give you some spiritual insight of some things that will help you to be encouraged in the Lord and to see, to open your eyes to the great blessings that you have in Christ Jesus. So Psalms 103, and I'm just going to read um, to verse 13. It's a beautiful chapter. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. His benefits, the good things that he does for us, his blessings. So what are they? Number one, verse three, he forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So the first blessing, his forgiveness. Four, verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So we have an, his second blessing here is the way he blesses us is he redeems us. His redemption is a blessing. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So that's his fourth blessing. He he's, gives us loving kindness. He loves us. Five, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like eagles. Thy mouth. Let's look at that word, thy mouth. I did a little extra research on, on what that meant. And mouth, in this instance, could be uh, translated um, ages or years. So who satisfies my years with good things. God is working things out, everything in, in our lives for his good throughout our days. For his good and his glory. So that thy youth is renewed like eagles. So spiritually we can be refreshed. 6, verse 6. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So the Lord protects us. 7, verse 7, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So another blessing, I forget what number we're on, I'm sorry, I think I've got about 10 here, so, but verse 7, his blessing is um, his revelation, he reveals himself to us through his word. And 8, the Lord is mercy and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He's long-suffering. That's another blessing. He's long-suffering to us and doesn't give up on us. Verse 9, He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. So that's the blessing of his grace, giving us what we don't deserve. You know, because of our sins, we deserve death and eternal separation from God. So this verse says, he, he doesn't reward us according to our sins. He rewards us according to our faith in Jesus. Verse 11, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. His mercy, his love is never ending. That's another blessing from God. Verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So he, uh, he removed, I believe this is the tenth blessing, <laughs> he removes our sins. So that's, that's a wonderful blessing, so encouraging to me to know that, that my sins are as far as the east is from the west, so far that 
he cast out my sin, my transgressions. And verse 13 says, like a, as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, fear him or trust in him. How, like a father, God is our heavenly father. The Bible says in John 1 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. So when you're when you believe on Jesus' name and you're a child of God, you experience all the benefits, all the blessings that I just read through in Psalms 103 to 113. And remember that verse that was among the favorite of those prisoners at that prisoner camp in, in Vietnam? For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so if you can't think of anything to be thankful or, 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 or can't think of anything to be thankful for or can't think of any blessings of God, that's, that one blessing right there is enough to help you abound with joy, enough to help you in any circumstance of life, knowing of the hope we have in Jesus. Psalms 23, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a blessing of eternal life we have through Jesus our Lord. Um, and I wanted to read one last verse to you. Jo mm, John 10:10, 10, 10, I believe. I have notes here, but they're kind of, the wind's blowing them all over the place, and I'm just kind of mostly going by memory here, but um, I pray that God will use these words here that I'm reading from, from the Bible to bless you and help you to, to see um, how you can be blessed spiritually. And so let's look at John 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. There we go. There we go. Jesus says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So, yes, we have an abundant life with Jesus forever in heaven. But we also can have the abundant life in Jesus now. Remember, Elijah said, I hear the abundance of rain. Even before it came to pass, he was still uh, just, just believing in his heart and, and joyful in his heart that he knew God was going to come through for him and God was working. And so we can be abundant knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we have a home in heaven and that God is working in our lives. And that should give us great hope and great encouragement, no matter what circumstances that we are in, in this life, because God will cause everything, any, everything that's happening in our life is, is God working in us. With nothing happens by accident. God is, is behind everything and working everything out to draw us closer to him so that he can bless us more and more and that we can be a blessing to others by being more like Jesus and sharing his love so okay well thank you so much for joining me for this devotion and I hope that you guys are have a very blessed day and you might want to look up Showers of Blessing and, and listen to that song again. And hopefully it'll have a deeper meaning for you as you do. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.